We'll now design some general scenic assets for our animated project using the built-in drawing tools. The first thing I need to do is create a new layer to draw some new content in. Below the timeline is our new layer button right here. And simply clicking that will produce an additional layer. Let's double click on that layer name and rename it to ground. With that layer selected, let's go ahead and choose our rectangle tool right here and make some adjustments. So one thing I want to do is turn off our stroke color. So to disable that, we can click on this swatch here and choose the white box with a red line through it. That will actually disable our stroke entirely. For my fill, I want to choose a nice light gray color, something like that. And let's turn object drawing mode on. When you have object drawing mode on and you're working with simple shapes, what it does is creates drawing objects. The advantage of having drawing objects in the same layer is that they won't interfere with one another. This can be destructive and drawing with object drawing mode turned on will alleviate that. That's all we need to do right now. So going back down to the lower left hand corner of our stage, we can click and drag to draw out a nice bit of ground to work with here. You'll notice that it's a little bit longer than the stage. We can use the selection tool to select our object. And notice since we drew this rectangle shape with drawing object mode on, that this is a drawing object. And here we can adjust our width and height. So let's say 747, because we know that's the actual width of our stage. And we'll make the height 80. Now notice when we made it 80 that it's not aligned to the bottom of our stage anymore. This can be easily fixed through the align panel, which can be found right here. And we can say align to stage and choose this option right here, align bottom edge. Perfect. With the selection tool, we can click anywhere on the document to unselect our drawing object here. And notice that the properties panel now reflects this, letting us know that we have selected the document itself and not any particular objects on the stage. What we can do here is actually modify how things appear. So notice as I hover my selection tool on the upper edge of our drawing object, that it turns the cursor into a little arc. This allows us to click and drag in order to adjust and tweak the curves of the different sides of our drawing object. I think that looks pretty good, so I'll leave it like that. Something else I'll want to do is to create an additional taller hill back here. So to do that, let's go ahead and use the pen tool. That can be selected from here. And what I'll do when using the pen tool is simply begin clicking and dragging to form a nice mountainous shape here. And you'll notice that this works very similar to the pen tool in Adobe Illustrator. Note that use of this pen tool is not critical to the animation. I now have my outline drawn with the pen tool. And at this point, I can go back over here and choose my paint bucket tool, clicking within to produce a fill. Now I have both a stroke and a fill at this time. I don't actually want that. So what I'll do is choose my selection tool here and let's select the drawing object I just created. And once again, in the swatch for my stroke color, I'm going to choose to have no stroke at all. In terms of my actual fill color, I want it to match these hills here. So let's choose a nice gradient color. I'm just going to choose this default black and white linear gradient. And then let's go into our color palette right here. And we're going to adjust this linear gradient. Clicking on any of these gradient stops right here is going to allow me to sample from anywhere on the stage. So let's choose this green color here for one side of our linear gradient. And I'll double click on the black one and choose a much lighter color. If I want to, I can actually add this to my project swatches by clicking this button right here. Let's collapse this panel and have a look. That looks pretty good. However, I am going to make some additional changes. You'll notice we have this little gap here. So I can just click and drag with my selection tool. And I want it a bit different here as well. And using that same technique, 
of clicking and dragging along the edge with the selection tool accomplishes that very nicely for me. In order to use a selection tool in this way, you have to make sure that the item that you're modifying is actually not selected. So hovering over the edge of a shape that isn't selected is going to allow you to make these transforms. Let's select the object and we'll simply move it down a little bit more until we get that nice perfect line right there. Now this actually is a bit bigger than I wanted. So let's choose once again the free transform tool and selecting that drawing object, I can now go ahead and make adjustments to exactly how big this larger hill appears. Let's now go ahead and lock down our ground layer. The last thing we want to do is create an additional cloud up in the sky. So below the timeline, we'll once again click the new layer icon to create a new layer, double click on that name, and type in cloud. That renames our layer to cloud. And what we'll do to create a cloud is actually use our vector art brush over in the toolbar here. This is known as the paintbrush tool. And when I have this selected, it allows us to change the style of our stroke based upon a brush library. Let's go ahead and click on that. And my brush library now opens up and I'm able to go ahead and choose from a variety of different brush categories within this library. You'll notice under elegant curl and floral brush set here that I have a number of different cloud brushes I can use. And double clicking on any one is going to apply that to my stroke. If I had any brushes that I created myself through my CC libraries panel, I could use them here as well. Let's use the paintbrush tool to go ahead and click and drag to create a cloud. Let's grab the selection tool and drag a selection rectangle across the stroke I just created. Notice the stroke size is at one right now, and that's why it doesn't look much like a cloud. It looks more like a line. So let's increase that until the cloud looks exactly like we want. We could of course choose any color from our swatches here, or we can even sample one of the existing clouds from the artwork here to have our vector art cloud actually match the cloud banks we see in the original artwork. Let's go ahead and lock all these layers down and choose File, Save. 